Hello, everyone. My name is Susan Damiani. I am the director of gift planning and the director of the McAllen Society, our legacy society. And today is our hello video in celebration of Women's History Month. I am so excited. Uh, and it's just so apropos that I should select, uh, I went all the way to the top and I selected one of our trustee emeritus, uh, Teresa Mason. She graduated 1975 from school, uh, from the St. Vincent College and got her honorary uh, uh, notice and degree in 2002. Am I correct, Teresa? 2004 and oh, really? from, uh, St. John's 1979. Oh, St. John's 1979. I have down here for some reason 2002. So thank you for the correction. 2002? Yeah. I, I don't know. The time flies. So sometimes it's hard. <laughs> I think it's 2004. But I have to say, I'm excited to be uh, interviewing you because um, I was just reading your bio, and you have certainly been a very, very busy woman. So it's very apropos that we should select you to start off our celebration of Women's History Month because you have a lot to share with us and a lot, um, I'm sure, of wisdom that you can share with our alumni, our entire alumni and, uh, and student base. So how are you today? I'm very good. And thank you, Susan, for this opportunity. You know, St. John's, uh, as you know, and many people who may see this know St. John's is in my soul. So oh, this wow. is um, this is always such a great opportunity to give back. So oh, thank, thank you, you so much. Well, since this is our hello video, we're saying hello from where? Um, hello from Mount Vernon, um, in Westchester. I love it. I, am I today. love it. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So why don't you tell us a little bit, you know, about yourself, like where you grew up, you know, maybe give us a little insight on how you came to St. John's, why you attended it. I saw you went to uh, law school at Howard University. Um, give us a little, a little uh, journey. Uh, take us through, your, I should say, your journey on well, how you came to St. John's. Well, I like that word journey because I think <laughs> it has been a journey and it continues <laughs> to be a journey. Good. Um, but you know, so I'm a Queens girl. I went to public schools in Queens. I yeah, went born in Queens General <laughs> Hospital. Um, so um, when I uh, graduated from from high school, you know, my parents couldn't afford to send me to college out of state, and so St. John's had a great reputation. I heard a lot about St. John's in the community. Some of the the kids that I went to school with had gone to St. John's, so it was definitely on the top of my list. Um, and so. It just worked out. I got accepted and, and um, had a just a, a great education. I um, majored in criminal justice um, because, you know, at least at that time, and I think still today, there are just so many opportunities in the world of criminal justice, whether it's the corporate sector, the law firms, um, not for profit, um, just a tremendous amount of opportunities, government. And so that was one of the reasons I selected the field. And I was just always interested in the criminal justice system. Um, at that point, I didn't think I was going to go to law school. I hadn't really been thinking about it. Um, when you but, say, sorry to interject, when you sure. say criminal justice, was there anything, uh, was there any person or any situation that uh, geared you towards that, that area? No, it was really more just... I was just intrigued by it and, and you know, it was, uh, you know, it was during a time that, you know, uh, the drug epidemic that was going on in, in this country. And so there was a lot of media uh, around the criminal justice system and, um, and, and at that time, what the reforms should look like. So I was just, I was just always interested in it. Oh, interesting. Um, That's great. Yeah. And, uh, and then I graduated from St. John's a semester early. And um, I started working full time for Creedmoor Psychiatric Center, which was down the street again sure, in Queens, yeah. right? Staying in mm -hmm. Queens. And um, it was the, when I was in that role, I, I you know I made a decision that I should maybe take a look at law school. And um, and I also felt like it was time to get out of Queens. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and, uh, and the other interesting part is that uh, I worked in the education and training department at Creedmoor. And the head of the department was the St. John's graduate. Oh, and he made it very clear to me that 
one of the overwhelming reasons I was being hired was because I was a St. John's graduate. Really? Yeah. I mean, he, he <laughs> talked about pay it forward way back right. then. He was paying Aww, it forward. That's um, nice. And uh, it, it was a wonderful opportunity, but, you know, a great group of people. Um, but, you know, I did decide to go to law school um, and I applied late. I didn't know if I would get in. I did get in. And that's a whole nother story. But, um, you know, St. John's gave me such a great foundation. And Howard uh, really just allowed me to build upon that. Um, so I feel like I had the best of all worlds. And for me, Howard Law School was a little bit of a game changer. You know, I not only wanted to be taught by the civil rights leaders and icons mm -hmm. and the architects of change in this country, but I wanted to get to know them. And I, I wanted to be a part of that environment. So it was a wonderful experience. Um, the friends that I made at Howard, the friends I made at St. John's, they're friends for life. We ride together. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, like I said, I was reading your bio and you've, you've had an illustrious career. Um, has anyone inspired you, especially since we're celebrating Women's History Month? Have, did you ever have a mentor or any woman, even not even in your career, maybe in your family that you looked up to and and inspired you to be so so motivated and and such a successful woman. So thank you for that, Susan. You know, I'm sure people um, never look at themselves as being really successful. I don't know. Maybe some people do. I know oh, you are. You are. I'm going to tell you, you are. <laughs> I, don't, I don't really see it. But, really? Um, That's I, I, know. I feel like I, you know, You're so I've modest. Been, <laughs> I, I feel like I've had so many wonderful, like you know, doors that open. And I and I say this, you know, oftentimes because I do a lot of mentoring. Um, is that you know we always have to be prepared right you never know when you're going to get the call when the opportunity is going to come which is why i also believe we need to be lifelong students right we, we just live in a world where everything is changing 24 7 news cycles um but sometimes i think as as women we don't always have the courage to walk through the door so mm -hmm. so we do have to to make sure that we don't take those opportunities lightly because it is our chance to pay it forward. It's our chance to, to do something differently, right? Um, and, and as I said, those opportunities, they just don't come along that often. And that's why you have to have great mentors and champions because those are the people that you go to to talk to when these opportunities come along. Because sometimes you only have, I've had situations where, you know, I've been given 24 hours to make up my mind, mm -hmm. right? So, mm -hmm. You know, your champions, your mentors, you know, be intentional about who you select because those people over the years will get to know you better than you know yourself, right? I've had That's mentors so who mm -hmm. pushed me into jobs and took me places that I absolutely unequivocally did not think were a good fit. And they turned out to be some of the best jobs I ever had. So well, even, even attending Howard University, I mean, that's not an easy school to get into. Um, right. So that and, alone is a success. And, um, and you said so nonchalantly, like, oh, I think I'll go to law school. I mean, not everyone, <laughs> not everyone thinks that way, Teresa. Well, so, I didn't know. I didn't know give yourself I, a pat on the back there. <laughs> I'm going to get in. I said, I'll take the LSATs and, you know, but thank God, you know, this, I, I keep this in my office. I'm just going to put it up. And, yeah. and it says, you know, let, let your faith mm -hmm. be bigger than your fear. Right. And I try right. to. I try to live by that a little bit. And, you know, I know it's always, you know, it's nervous going into a new field or doing something different, mm -hmm. but there's something called healthy nerves and that's yes. okay. Mm -hmm. um, but sometimes you got to take the leap of faith, you know, be a little bold um, and it more than likely will, will serve you well. But sure. um, mentors, I, I strongly encourage people, <clears throat> excuse me, to have mentors. I have three or four mentors. They're all very accomplished. I don't abuse the relationship. They know if I call them, I need to talk to them about something. They make themselves available. Mm -hmm. um, I call them my kitchen cabinet. <laughs> and they are my kitchen cabinet. And, and I, I encourage people, if you meet someone and they've had the kind of a career that you'd like to mirror, make them your mentor. I've made, I've made many of these people my mentor. They didn't say, I will mentor you. Right. I made them my mentor. And I just, mm -hmm. 
I started calling them, I contacted them, I developed relationships with them. And then after a period of time, I just said, you know, you're my mentor. And they were like, yeah, sure. So, <laughs> <laughs> so you know, you got to be a little assertive too. Definitely. Um, no, that, that's yeah. great. It, that's great advice. It really is. Even for me. I mean, yeah. I'm trying, I'm sitting here and I'm trying to think who my mentors are. And I think I have a few, but you're right. I don't consider them uh, officially mentors. Cause like you say, I don't even know if they know it's kind right. of like my go-to person that, like you said, there are times when you have to make that decision for your career. And then you're like, mm, I need a little reinforcement, you right. know, before I do that leap of faith, as you say, yeah. and, right. um, and you do, you need, you need that support. And I will say, sometimes it is my mother. I have a very strong mother and I'll go to her and she is fearless. So when I go to her, she, she, she just gives me one sentence answers, you know, right. she may, and I'm like, ma, it's not that easy, but, <laughs> but her, but her confidence and her strength and her independence really pushes me, you know, to go to the next step. That's, and you um, gotta have that, you know, and my mother, yeah. and I should have mentioned her, she's yeah. been, of course, my mentor, she's going to be 91 next week. God bless. And she's like amazing. I mean, my mother yeah. still drives, she travels. Um, and she, you know, side note, she cleaned offices at St. John's at night in the 60s, really? you know, wow. with five children. Um, yes. wow. So, and she has the, I mean, the best judgment and the best common sense of any person that I know, just an absolutely amazing person. So that's where it starts, right? It starts at home. Exactly. Um, and through your, you know, your counselors at school always mm -hmm. pushing you to get great, good grades and, you know, right. select a career. And then <laughs> my first, what is it? My first two weeks at St. John's, I think I was in Sister Ann's English class <laughs> and she hit me with a ruler on my hand. What? And I had never gone to Catholic school. So I wasn't, you know, used to that or, or yeah. had never experienced that. That's unusual at, like, this, at that level though. Usually you hear so. that in elementary school. Wow. So. Yeah. I and I was heard very, that. like taken aback by it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I said to her, well, why did you hit me with the ruler? And she said, look at your English exam. And I looked at it. I said, but I got a 93. She said, you should have got a hundred. <gasps> like, She's oh. tough. Wow. And, but but you, the fact that story still stays with me all these decades later, it, it really, to me, demonstrated the holistic Mm. education that you get at St. John's, right? That like she, I understand, you know, maybe she didn't go about it the right way, but I understood that <laughs> she, she cared about me and she wanted me to be the best that I could be. Right. And to think, you know, just because you got a 93 doesn't mean that you don't need to strive higher. Right. She had a lot um, of faith in you. Right. So she, of, yeah, um, yeah. so I always kind of remember that, that, yeah. you know, you, you can always yeah. do better. And that Just for the record, end. that doesn't go on now at St. John's. Oh, I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and it only happened at one time. No one else. I was just like, sister in. And it's like always... <laughs> You know, Another sometimes girl. they call that tough love and sometimes we need that. Yeah, you know? this was, uh, yeah, listen, this was in 1979. I know, um, so yeah, 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 but, that's uh, funny. But you kind of remember that. And then when I went into the yeah, corporate sure. arena, I, you know, yeah. I had a great, you know, um, a woman who was uh, an executive and she sort of, she took me under her wing because, you know, I've been fortunate to have been parachuted into a number of senior positions mm -hmm. and culture is so important, particularly when you walk into a new environment and sure. you're walking in as a leader. Mm -hmm. um, so she was very instrumental to me when I went into the banking field. Um, and, you know, there, there have obviously been others, but, you know, she's one that stands out and she's one that we've continued to have a relationship with, you know, to this day. So that's terrific. Yeah. Well, as we, as we close, um, what, what's one word that you would use to describe St. John's? Like you haven't figured it out yet. Family. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I like Family. that. That's great. Yeah. It yeah. is, uh, all these years later, mm -hmm. um, who says you can never come, you know, who says you can never come home again. Right. So right. I, I definitely. Yeah. Well, that's good to hear. I, I feel the same. I feel the same way. And hopefully the women, you know, since we're celebrating Women's History Month, that our alumni, 
you know, we'll feel like St. John's the same way you feel and the same way I feel that right. uh, this is family. We should all come together, right? Right, and lift each other up, right? We exactly. Should lift each other up because, um, you know, everybody's journey is different, but we have mm -hmm. a lot in common. Right, and we can all be mentors to each other. Absolutely. I mean, that's, that's the power that we have as we come together as St. John's women and with our Vincentian values with St. Vincent de Paul and St. Louise de Marillac. I mean, she's, she's given us some, right. and all, you know, all the Vincentian leaders, uh, you know, we, that's something special and unique just to St. John's that we can incorporate in, in our leadership and, uh, and as we, you know, help each other. So uh, that's really important too. So thank you for starting off our celebration. And we have wonderful programming for the entire month. Uh, I know you'll be closing it out with fellow uh, women leaders at St. John's with the panel discussion and it's called Women Empowering Women. So that's at the end, that's when we're really gonna come together and I hope everybody you know, signs up for that. Um, I'm really excited for that for the and that's March 30th. So thank you for supporting us and, and helping us out with that. So just have a great afternoon. And thank you again. And, you know, I'm just honored to be part of this St. John's family and 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 alumni, um, because you're you're part of it. So I'm really, I'm really proud. Well, thank um, you. you St. John. So thank you. Thank you again, Susan. This has been amazing. And you, anything I could do for St. John's, I'm always available. You, you know, this school has given me so much. Um, I don't know that I could ever completely give back what, what you've given to me. 